What's up, YouTube? Tonight, we're taking it back to D.C., the mid-'80s, early-'90s. We're talking about a hitter that was doing hits in his early teens. We all know Shorty Pop. He's been mentioned by some popular street dudes. So tonight, we're going to get into the run of Shorty Pop. See, there's no way a little kid should be concerned about money. I can see if he wants his own things to buy. But a kid shouldn't be ever concerned about money. Now, what would cause a kid to be concerned about money? Poverty, going to school and getting made fun of because of his shoes and clothes. A young Sheldon once played for Def Jam Junkyard Band. Many would say he looked happy while doing it. Well, a kid gonna be a kid, but how is that possible when your stomach is growling? Having many distractions at home. The missing love from both parents. A kid can only do so much. You can bag groceries hoping you don't forget to steal so you can have something to eat that night. Kids used to sell newspapers and shine shoes early on, but this was D.C. in the 1980s. The abuse from home and jumping from different group homes left an unstable child. A child that already felt like nobody cared. He was one of those kids on 16th Street that stayed in trouble. He, along with friends, used to jump random people they would see in the neighborhood. Now, that's what kids used to do back in the day. Like in most neighborhoods, they would just jump people out of boredom. When all the other kids would be indoors getting ready for school, Pop would be out in the streets super late, out with the hustlers in danger. The older men would send him to the store, but he would pocket the money and never come back. He was poor and needed the money bad, and the only work available for him is to work in the streets. He and his crew would run the streets and watch the old heads and would be willing to do anything to make a quick buck. It was all about whoever had to work. You go check them out, and if you bring your tool, you get straight paid. And we all know what that mean. Now, before any gunplay was involved, he was known as a fighter, unlike the majority of these other hitters out here. His bout game was on point, so if he did get locked up, he was cool. He'd been through it all, from getting jumped, to jumping people, to winning, to losing, getting his jaw broken. It wasn't until a very incident involving a rumble that people just knew he wasn't normal. After he kept delivering blows to his opponent, when he was already out cold, it was over and he continued to strike like a madman. People knew that there was definitely screws missing. This was around the time DC was on fire. A lot of people would say he jumped off the step too early, but he didn't even have a step to jump off of. The streets raised him, and he would fit in perfectly fine. The love that was missing was replaced with the money and respect he would receive from the streets. He finally felt like he was a part of something. Now, he couldn't get no Gucci, but he can get a Uzi. Nobody was going to just put money in his pocket unless he put the work in. But if you needed a tool, they got you. Many tools passed around the hood. Someone will hold on to it for a couple days, then they get passed to the next person. Next thing you know, it's getting sold. That same ratchet used to stick something up or a body, and people will say that first one takes time to get over, but they said it didn't phase in one bit. He didn't lay low. He was actually outside that same night. This was a time everybody was outside trying to get some money. You either had to work or you had the gun. He noticed a lot of dudes around him was doing stick-ups, and they were either receiving money or work. He hooked up with an older fella named Stink. Now, Stink was one of those guys on the street that would laugh and cheer on the kids' bad behavior in the neighborhood. He thought it was funny. And I was told that Stink wanted to pop the ride with him so he could make a play. He had some business with some fellas across town. The deal went wrong, resulting in the body dropping, resulting in Stink leaving with the work and Pop picking up the money. So that was the move from there on. Pop and Stink started moving around. Stink knew he had a fearless young boy around him. Pop was always down for a lick. His name started to ring bells. The heavyweights would start to hear the name Pop more often. And Pop would begin to hear names like Rayful, Frey. And money would always be in the same sentence. So he went wherever the money went. Now you had guys that was getting to a dollar that only dealt with them out of fear. They would supply him, give him some work, and even hit him off a couple dollars just to keep him off their backs. There's times he would get booked for months, come home with nothing but lit in his pocket. By the end of the night, he'll have a couple thousand in his pocket. To be honest, he was one of those guys that they hated. They hated when he got out of jail, along with Wayne Perry. Now, speaking on Wayne Perry, I heard a lot of people say that he feared Pop, but can't tell a single story to back up the statement. How could you put an emotion on a man that you never met? None of us could feel what Wayne Perry felt. Wayne Perry didn't extort Pop, Pop didn't extort Wayne Perry. That doesn't mean they feared each other. They was in the same circle. Some of Pop's family knew Wayne. Pop grew up watching Wayne and his uncle handle some business. Pop wasn't used to seeing any nine-to-fivers, and if he did, they was barely making it. 
but he didn't think about jumping into the nine to five lane. He would approach some players in the game and he didn't have a problem with asking for work. He would get fronts from dudes and these dudes would be the same dudes that would be scared to ask for what he owed. They was just shook. You didn't want to rub pop the wrong way. Now, becoming a 16 year old father, he had to make things happen and taking on more and more responsibilities. The streets had his up and downs, but when it begins to pay well, it starts to show. He linked up with output when they both learned how to use each other, whether it was business or personal. Pop started to ride around the range rovers and rocking all types of furs. Let's just say business was good. Becoming knee deep in the game, guys would be coming home from jail after not seeing Pop since a pup. They would see how he and the other little homes is carrying it, and they would just go the other way because they wasn't built for it. The way he was giving it up, he put a lot of dudes out of business. He sent a lot of dudes into early retirement. When he pulled up, guys wouldn't stay around too long. You didn't know what he was coming to do or who he was coming to see. Now, outside the streets, skating was his thing. That was really the only time he could be a kid, being around other kids his age having fun because he was playing a grown man game, so he was always around the old heads. He had one incident where his piece was interrupted and allegedly pissed someone down at the skating rink he was known for, so he was known to be a regular at this skating rink. But I guess it was either him or me that was the mentality, so I guess he just had to handle business. It got to a point that all his wreck was catching up to him. He was in and out of jail for armed robberies, sometimes two at the same time, triple homies. He'd beat the triple and come back for a double. While behind bars, he had to be careful and watch out for guys that could be revengeful for the acts he committed on the streets. When he was released back on the streets, he would be so into it with different people that he didn't know where the heat would come from. He had so much going on, guys couldn't really stay near him. Now, towards the end, things were a little different. He got out, most of his important resources were either locked up or in a casket. For example, Alpo was one of the ones locked up. Dudes were just scared to do business with him. At that point, he'll just try to take whatever you had. He began doing stick ups, but it was hard to get paid when you got a lot of enemies. While he was locked up, the same dudes he had beef with was still on the streets developing connections and getting stronger. The year 1992, he decided to go out and show his face. Eyes were on him the whole night. He always paid attention to his surroundings, but it was something about that night he didn't recognize, or maybe it could have been a new face with some type of connections to his ops. As he made his exit into the parking lot, he was struck with AK fire. With the AK being a weapon of choice, his ops suspected return fire with the reputation of Shorty Pop's crew, but was surprisingly wrong. Shorty Pop's run will be stopped at the age of 19. This will cause certain guys to be able to show their face again. This will bring joy to the guys he used to lean on, guys he used to wreck on. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. Once you're in the game, it's only two ways out. Thanks for watching.